Originally, my plans were simple. Show off the Novrich SSP5 when it was new at Balahack Airsoft and make a gameplay video out of it. That was it. But it rained, cameras crashed, footage was lost. But then the SSP2 launched and all the questions and comparisons started to roll in. Is the new SSP2 by Novrich any better than the SSP5 or is it at least comparable? So this video changed up a bit. This is the SSP5 and these are the SSP2s that I have. As you can see, I have two of them because I'm giving them away. One has been claimed by a German and the other will be given away shortly. Keep an eye out for the giveaway here on the US Airsoft YouTube channel as it'll be dropping hopefully in about a week or two. I would have done the giveaway on my Instagram page, but Instagram instantly suspends my accounts whenever I start one. So just follow me there to show your support anyway. I'd appreciate it. Also, I really want to directly thank Lone Wolf, Alistair Kerr, and Calamity Coyote. We've raced past 170 channel members lately, thanks to Lone Wolf and Alistair Kerr donating so many memberships during our recent live streams. And Calamity Coyote is making some crazy donations during those streams, so I thought they deserved a little bonus appreciation. So thanks guys. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at both of these high kappa style pistols by Novrich and explain why I prefer the more expensive SSP-5 over the cheaper and more practical SSP-2. We begin where we always do with the unboxings. It's the same minimalist style of boxes that we expect from Novrich, which continue the Apple product jokes. The SSP-5's packaging is a lot nicer though. The cardboard is denser, and the lid has a couple magnets to hold itself down. Opening it up, we see the manual, the magazine, and the pistol itself held tightly with some dense foam. A valve tool with an allen wrench for TDC hop-up adjustments can be found under the magazine as well. On the other hand, the SSP2's box is just a standard cardboard box with a manual inside. No foam in here this time. Just some zip ties to hold the pistol down and an allen wrench for your hop-up adjustments underneath the branded packaging. The magazine is already in the SSP2, so that saves on packaging materials. The manuals are basically the same, just some parts explanations and a basic safety guide. These are not meant for beginners, but an exploded diagram of the parts would have been a great addition in my opinion. Now, with both high kappas out of their boxes, I can tell you that build quality is really good on both of the offerings, and that's coming from someone who really isn't too wowed by high kappas anymore. It's true that I run one as my secondary of choice at the moment, but that's only because I haven't gotten the right holster to run my Cutlass M9 Pride Chats. These things just work. High kappas in general can wipe the floor with a lot of other secondaries out there, including the M17, the M1911, and M9s, which is kind of sad to admit. I've just seen so many of these in every fashion that you can imagine that I'm bored of them. Stellar performers when done right, just boring to look at when it comes to me. I personally think that the SSP5 is really ugly. However, let's just see what these pistols can do and what they feature. Despite the obvious differences in length, with the SSP-2's slide assembly coming in at 7.5 inches long, while the SSP-5 is 9 inches long, weights are nearly the same, give or take a couple ounces. The CNC aluminum construction of the slides and frames would help this, but expect the parts that should be made from steel like the hammer and the sears to be made from steel. More on internals in a bit. Taking a look at just the frames right now, the SSP-2 bears a nearly 4-inch accessory rail for flashlights and lasers. We also have 5 slots on each side of the SSP-2 for an over-the-slide sight rail. And that is a really nice touch that I expected of the Novrich crew. However, with this rail equipped, you'll see quickly that your iron sights are basically useless now. The flat trigger with its adjustable screw and ambidextrous safeties are the last real noticeable traits. The magwell isn't particularly flared, although flared magwells are available along with holster attachments and more. The support for both of these pistols is vast, that's for sure. The wraparound golf ball textured grip is pretty good, 
it's not too aggressive or too smooth. And with gloves on, you shouldn't have any issues with the SSP2. And bless whoever thought of this screw placement. Say goodbye to wobbly ambi safeties. Besides that, the extended controls finish off the notable features. The SSP5, on the other hand, is actually less equipped. The accessory rail isn't as long, the sight slash holster attachment slots are only on the left side, and that ambidextrous safety screw can't be found on here. The controls are still extended though, and the safety is tighter. Maybe the magazine release could have been extended or enlarged, but being swappable to either side of both SSPs is okay with me. Again, there's no flared magwell straight from the box, and as you can see, this grip pattern differs from before. It's more textured as if it was 3D printed. Again, not too aggressive, it's just right. The slides is where the real stuff matters across both of these Novridge pistols. Something I never hear hate for are the rock solid barrel sets on either of these. Both the SSP2 and SSP5 feature non-moving barrel sets, with the 5 going one step further by having a split slide that was built to be as small as possible without causing major cycling issues. It's basically just a blowback unit with a slide keeping it together. The SSP5 does beat out the SSP2 in the sights department. The fiber optics of the 5 are just much nicer, and even with the red dot screwed into place, you still don't block your sights. This low profile red dot setup is a major plus, along with the TDC design of the SSP5. A large squared contact patch along with a one piece chamber and fluted barrel set will help you throw 0.4 gram BBs with ease. The adjustable screw is also longer in comparison to the SSP2, giving you more adjustments if you feel the need to have them. I honestly didn't, but you just might. Lastly, what I've noticed due to what's left of the slide to cycle, you can spam shots as fast as you possibly can pull a trigger with the SSP5. There's no need to be this spammy with your high kappa, but it just goes to show what the Novridge team can do. However, there is a price to pay here, and we'll see what I'm talking about when we look at the internals. But first, the SSP2 isn't as flashy, I'll say that now. I feel like I've seen this same pistol a couple dozen times already. Again, the stabilized and secure barrel set is appreciated. And again, we got a TDC to take advantage of that can throw up to 0.46 gram BBs this time. It's a little excessive in my opinion, since I think I'll only be using 0.32 grams or 0.36 gram BBs at the most, but at least it's capable of much more. Again, we see how the fiber optic sights of the 5 outshine the plain white dotted sights of the 2. Ultimately, for sight picture, with or without a red dot, the SSP5 is the clear winner. The SSP5 overall seems to be made as a primary more than any other Novridge branded pistol. I would regard this to be overkill if used as strictly a secondary even at field games. I've already seen this thing do amazing work at Balahack Airsoft, and Swamp Sniper agreed. This thing was dishing out back-to-back long-range hits with ease. And with the magazine adapter, you can take things to a newer level of easy mode. And in CQB, forget about it. You'll max out the range that's available to you at any CQB arena, as long as you're capable yourself of getting that hit. Add on a thread adapter to the end of the barrel and add on a trace unit, and you're golden. The SSP5, I noticed, seems to be thought up as more of a high-end option that gets a lot of talk going when someone brings one out, whereas the 2 blends into the crowd more. It just looks like any other old black high kappa. I really would like to do more reviews than just high kappas, but I really feel like I've seen this same setup like two or three times already on the US Airsoft channel alone. The internal compatibility is where things differ the most, however. The SSP5 isn't meant to be upgraded or messed with. It's already done. That was the mentality behind it. Several parts on the inside are proprietary to help with lockup, to keep the more stable TDC hop-up system in check, and to keep the pressure plate from tilting like standard Tokumari spec hop-up plates and arms, and to keep the 6.01mm precision inner barrel from tilting or shifting in any way. Now speaking on the SSP2, nearly everything is TM spec ready in here, 
But the balls of Novich reps who worked on this thing are massive to say, you will not make it any better. I've heard a couple times already that you won't find a better slide or hop up. I know a lot of people right now watching this who would love to prove them wrong. So basically, the SSP2 can be easily modded more if you see fit, but the SSP5 is best left alone unless you're crafting your own seals or o-ring mods, as some very intricate gas blowback owners do. Luckily, there's dozens of videos on both of these pistols all over YouTube. I've tried to focus my attention for this review on write-ups from owners, techs that have worked on both of these, and I've talked to Novich reps to get a good idea about stuff like the maple leaf silicone buckings inside the hop-ups and the polymer blowback unit in the SSP-5 to further decrease follow-up shot times. I didn't want to steal anyone's thunder, so absolutely go watch as many of the videos that you can find over the SSP-2 and the SSP-5 as you can. That way you can get an even clearer idea about what you can expect from either of these. The way I see it though, the SSP-5 is the higher end, more performance capable option. The SSP-2 is the cheaper option with noticeable cost cuts when comparing the two. Think base model of cars compared to their highest priced versions. But if these are supposed to be as good as they can be, then we'll go ahead and check out the chronograph and range test to see if that's true. Now for the cheaper SSP-2 with 0.2 gram BBs, we can see sub CQB limits, but the consistency is kinda all over the place. I know it's hard to make out these readings as I forgot to set the focus on my camera to manual. So I took the time to clean the SSP-2 and try this test again. Then the more expensive SSP-5 that can be had for a little under 300 US dollars, again dishes out sub US CQB readings with 0.2 gram BBs. That's actually really surprising to me, but it just goes to show that brute power does not equal range. Then one more test was done at the chronograph with 0.4 gram BBs. This is the weight that the SSP-5 shines with, and the SSP-2 can go up to 0.46 gram BBs, but I would like to mention again that I think this is a little overkill. I would stick with 0.40 gram BBs if I used an SSP-2 as my main. As for gas consumption, the SSP-5 upon the first test only dished out 39 shots, so I purged the magazine and tried again, which netted me 78 shots and then 90 shots on an 85 degree Fahrenheit Texas day. I honestly expected about 100 shots or more with the lighter split slide, but anything over 50 is good enough for me with the 30 round green gas magazine. The SSP-2 continued to surprise me with 81 and 88 shots. I expected the heavier slide to slash gas consumption in comparison to the SSP-5, but I'm not complaining at all. Even when spamming the trigger as fast as possible, I got 50 shots before the SSP-2 started to act irregularly. So if either of these are meant to be your sidearm of choice, then you should be totally fine when it comes to gas consumption. But as for the main test, we have range and consistency. Right away, at 100 feet, you would have to be blind or stupid to screw up these shots. We're using 0.4 gram BBs with the SSP-5 and the SSP-2 with very little wind interference. And even without dialing in the hop-ups perfectly, these distances are not a challenge at all. So for most CQB games, you'll wreck house with either of these offerings. At 200 feet, the SSP-5 is still killing it. It's not a challenge at all. For the SSP-2, however, it's doable, but with some hop-up adjustments, I think you'll be better off. Then at 250 feet or 76 meters, the SSP-5 is still usable if you don't rush your shots like we are here. The SSP-2 and the SSP-5 are about even here, but I still feel more confident with the SSP-5 over the SSP-2. If you would like to turn this review into a drinking game, then let me know how smashed you are by the end of this review if you're drinking every time I say SSP-2 or SSP-5. Anyway, once we start getting to 250 plus feet, that's when we start getting into primary territory, so I'm happy to see both of these still getting hits at this point. So you can both spam the SSP-5 or use it like a pocket sniper. Or you can feel at home with the more traditional SSP-2, but still take advantage of a lot of the performance traits of the SSP-5. However, for my conclusions, I'll state again that I'm bored of high kappas. 
I just am. They are good at their jobs, some better than others. Like, the main thing that's going for the SSP2 is that it's already upgraded with a 6.01 inner barrel, the TDC hop-up setup and the mounting slots, and for $170, that's really hard to beat. Even if you want to do your own mods, then you can do that. They left the book open for you to try, but it's still boring to look at in my opinion. Then for the SSP5, well, it's primary worthy. The partial slide and sight arrangement is really nice. It feels really high quality, and this is one of the few replicas that harsh Novridge critics will admit is not all that bad. I prefer the SSP5 for all those reasons, but I expect critics to still scoff at it just a little bit. But if I like something and I'm happy with it, then I couldn't care less if you don't like it. I think I've made that pretty clear over the years of putting on US Airsoft. So now I gotta decide if I wanna replace my ICS Challenger with the SSP5. I might just mix it up a little bit and use both here and there. Or maybe I'll take a look at the smaller SSP5 5.1 since it's on its way to a whole bunch of different websites. Internal tracers are also coming out, and the SSP5 has a lot of further developments coming. The Novich team is far from done with this pistol line. Now, someone I would highly recommend if you'd care to geek out about production details or tech advice is WYZ2285. I've learned a lot from him over the years, and as a novice in the teching world, I'll accept any knowledge that I can get from gurus like him. He'll show you all the internals in depth on both of these, something I'm not willing to do as I'll be giving these away here on YouTube. For the SSP5 internal breakdown from someone else who isn't too fond of the high cap of meta either, Negative Airsoft is your man. Obviously I can't cover everything here, nor do I really want to. Again, there's a bunch of other people that have dug into these, so look around and do your own research. Do not stop with just my videos. Go through other videos, read into a few articles, and make your own educated decisions. I just hope that you enjoyed what I'm doing here, and I would hope to see you again in my next video. Of course, I would like to thank the Novich team for letting me check out a few of their pistols, and I would like to thank them for sending me to Balahack Airsoft when they did. Links to the Novich website can be found in the description down below, along with other details. But please, tell me what you think about the SSP5 and the SSP2 in the comments down below. I would really like to hear your opinions. But until that next video drops from the city of Dallas, Texas, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. I think it's only fitting that we show just how fast you can spam the Novridge SSP-5. Uh, bear with me as I do this. That could have been a little better, but you can see that due to this short slide, you can really get shots out pretty quickly. run that one fast oh yeah and it feels really smooth and that's why yeah. I'm really liking this a lot more than the SSP2 yeah this is definitely the one I'd buy out of the two